So again, I was asking you guys um, to wait, go ahead and prove this, right? We're asking for a proof. So to go ahead and prove this, what we're going to have to go and do is <clears throat> set up a two column. Yep, right? And when we set up our two columns, we have statements. And then we have a reason. OK, so now we're going to write a proof to prove that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. All right? So now in this proof, we're going to start using some of our angle definitions that we've used. We're not going to always going to be algebraic. So ladies and gentlemen, when we have a statement and a reason, um, what it's asking us is they give us angle 1 is equal to angle 2. And that has been given. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. And the reason being is that is given. Now we know why those are equal to each other. Because those are equal to each other because what type, what definition, how are angle 1 and angle 2 related to each other? Anybody? Yes. They're alternate exterior, so therefore we know that they are equal in value. Okay? Okay. So we have angle one is equal to angle two. Done. Now, here's the good question. Does anybody remember how do angle two and angle three relate to each other? We kind of have don't talk about it as much right now because they don't angle two and angle three don't rely on having parallel lines, but they rely on having an intersection of two lines with Damon, which are starts with a V. Vertical angles, right? Very good. If you guys look at this, now notice we do, we've been talking so much about parallel lines, we kind of got away a little bit from vertical angles. But Sierra, when you're looking at these, you guys can notice that all you need, remember, vertical angles is just the intersection of two lines. But are vertical angles equal to each other, Damon? Do you remember? Yeah, yeah they are. So what I can say is angle two is equal to angle three. And why are they equal? They're equal because the definition of vertical angles. Ow. I hear water. Everybody understand that? OK. So <clears throat> if 1 is equal to 2 and 2 is equal to 3, would you guys then come to the conclusion that 1 is equal to 3? Yes. I'll say it again. If 1 is equal to 2 and 2 is equal to 3, can we say then that 1 is equal to 3? Yes. yes. Does anybody know the definition of that? Or why? What property that is? The what? No? Uh, 1 and 3 are corresponding. Yeah, we could write that with corresponding. But if A equals to B, and b equals to c, then you can say a is equal to c. That's called the transitive property. And also, you know what? You could even just write, to finish off this proof, yeah, you could have just used corresponding angles really quickly as well. Um, so therefore, you can now say that if I have those are equal to each other, oh, one is of angle 1. I should write. So now you can say the measure of angle 1 is congruent to the measure of angle 3. And those are because the transitive property. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot. Um, no, proof. We don't need to prove that. Prove given, prove L is, that's the wrong question. I wrote down the wrong one. We're not trying to prove that those two angles are equal. We're trying to prove that L is parallel to M. Sorry. No, 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 we're still fine with this. I just forgot to write in, we're, trying to, we're not trying to prove that the angles are equal to each other. We're trying to prove that they're congruent. Or I'm sorry, that the lines are parallel. So. So then we know that measure of angle 1 is equal to measure angle 3, right? We prove that by altering exterior and vertical angles. So therefore, measure of angle 1 and measure of angle 3, we know those are equal to each other, right? Yes? And what type of angles are those? Who said it? They're what? 
they're corresponding angles, right? So if you have corresponding angles that are equal in measure, what does that tell you about the lines? The lines have to be parallel, right? If you have corresponding angles that are equal in measure, then you have to have parallel lines. If you have alternate interior angles that are equal in measure, you have to have parallel lines. So therefore, I can now say L is parallel to M because the measure of angle 1 and or is congruent to the measure of angle 3 by corresponding angles. All right. And there we go. Done.